Hey, happy Thursday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, I'm going to show you what's left from Storm Nicole and what the impacts will be as we go along up the southeast as well, all the way to the northeast. Now, there is a big tornado threat, but from what I can see from the information, I don't see it as that big yet. Now, you can see we do have a tornado warning already out going by St. Augustine, but if you look at the rotation, you can see the rotation is pretty weak. So right now it's at 30 knots. It's pretty much a big mesoscale scale just spinning up there in the upper atmosphere. It's not reaching all the way down yet, but you still have that threat as this goes all the way for today. It's going to swing all the way to the southeast for Georgia and South Carolina, and it's going to push further up the coast as we go into tomorrow. So I'll show you what the probabilities are, what HRRR, what you can expect, as well as what's been going on, because we did have a lot of problems yesterday. And right now, Storm Nicole is at 51 miles per hour, moving 17 miles per hour to the northwest. So it is really booking. But when it gets over here in the Big Bend area, it's still twirling counterclockwise, so it will be putting that onshore flooding you still have that storm surge for the big bend area and everybody in all this blue is still in a tropical storm warning you can see the big wind field this is a tropical storm winds right here at least 39 miles per hour winds coming at you now this is still going to be coming at y'all all day long as it moves north but overnight last night was a pretty rough night mostly it was a lot of beach erosions a lot of high waves breaking far away pulling away all the sand and they did have some collapses to some of the buildings a lot of seawall destruction also happened and most of this did happen by flagler beach daytona beach a lot of the damage as well as the power outages the power outages are really starting to climb for last night and today so right now florida is at 240,000 without power let's refresh it and see if it's gone down it has gone down a little bit so far they are are saying that they're trying to get on it as soon as the winds subside a little bit but you can see where the hitting has happened for the power outage and the biggest one being Brevard County so this will go towards northern Florida northern Florida and southern Georgia has a lot of trees so there will be a lot of power outages for there as well hopefully they get it back on quick as possible but you can see how for the rest of today how this is going to go to the northwest and you still have all this banding that's going along Georgia also for South Carolina all the way to three o'clock in the afternoon it's really going to be some strong banding for georgia and south carolina but as you go into the overnight hours and go for tomorrow that's when it's going to be another chance for these bandages you see how it comes on shore good chances for these to spin up to tornadoes if it has the shear to go with it you see how it goes all the way up towards north carolina not really a lot of strong cells from what i am seeing what I'm seeing in the model data is that a lot of these could be potential water spouts. I'm not seeing a lot of potential tornadoes on land. So let me show you the data that I found so you can see what you can expect. Let me show you the wind gust that you're going to see first out of this track. And out of everything that was done with this storm last night, the one part, despite the damage and the problem everybody had been dealing with, the one part that really shocked me about yesterday is out of all the hype that was put out there, and there was a lot of hype. I got 10 people going, a lot of hype. Where was everybody? I'm so shocked that nobody at least updated y'all. People that saw my update last night, you saw how tired I was, yet I still did it. Went off with my family after that, like I said I was, and with all the loving and good attention that I've been deprived of all day long, I had a great time. And I actually fell asleep. But this is what I showed y'all last night, how you have all these strong winds coming. There's your wind gust. And so you can see exactly what you're looking at. With the orange, you're going to be in the 40s. With the pink, you're going to be in the 60s. The red is the 50s. You will see that today. But they had the 70s and the 80 miles per hour wind gust. And I showed this yesterday where it was coming on land. That way you can prepare for it the best way you can. But as you go through today, now it's going to be in the Big Bend area. And now you have a big widespread field of 40 miles per hour wind gusts in the orange, 50 in the red. And this is by 2 o'clock this afternoon. Some places still getting 60 in that pink. And as it goes all afternoon long, it will go to the Florida Panhandle, southern Alabama, southern Georgia with 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts. Then as you go into later tonight, this is where it's going to go back towards the northeast. 
And you see how the winds pick up a little bit around southern Georgia, mostly Albany. You still got the 40s and 50s. But then it starts dissipating to the 40s as you go into tomorrow morning. A lot of Georgia moving into South Carolina. You still have it for northern Florida. But it will pick up again, not just a tornado threat. I don't see that as a very huge threat. I still see this is going to be a potential damaging wind threat as it goes up towards the northeast. So now you're looking at on the 12th, by midnight, you're still getting 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts, even portions of West Virginia getting into the 60s and maybe even Western Virginia itself. Now that is moving in tomorrow night towards Virginia and West Virginia as you go from 9 and 10 o'clock at night, 40, 50, even 60 miles per hour wind gusts as it covers the Northeast by midnight on Friday, midnight tomorrow, with at least 40 miles per hour wind gusts, even showing trails of 50. So with all this banding I just showed you, this is it here, and you can see as it moves northward, it's the same thing I just showed you of the banding as it moves towards the northeast with all of these storms. Now for today, your severe weather from National Weather Service, you still have that tornado threat for Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin as that snowstorm still comes up to the Dakotas, bringing all the heavy snow, you do have that tornado threat. But right here for North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Northern Florida, you have a 2% and a 5% chance for tornadoes for today. Your 5% is Jacksonville, Florida, Savannah, Georgia, Fayetteville, North Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina, and Charleston, South Carolina, as well as the 2% in the green. And for tomorrow, this is going to go further up the coast, just like I showed you. And you do have another big tornado threat from National Weather Service. Big 2% in the green and the 5% in the brown. And the biggest threat is Charlotte, North Carolina, Virginia Beach, Virginia, Raleigh, North Carolina, and Norfolk, Virginia with Greensboro, North Carolina. You also have the 2% on the bottom, which also includes Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Baltimore, Maryland, Washington, D.C., Arlington, Virginia, and Alexandria, Virginia. But as you look, you'll see that all these trails going all up Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina as well. You got some strong cells coming through. And it does go for Friday as well. You see you have these strong cells come through North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware. But when you look at the shear to see if you're getting any shear on these cells, you can see clearly that the strong shear with the winds is around the north side of the center of this storm. But when you look for those cells, you can see you're not getting a lot of shear on these cells that screaming out, hey, this could be a potential tornado. Most of the winds will be on land already. But I'm not showing any big sections with a lot of chances for tornadoes. Now you see you do get some dark brown and some white around 11 p.m. tonight. Now that is for South Carolina and Georgia line. A little nasty cell as it passes through. So there is some potentials but I don't see it screaming like a big tornado threat. And look how weak the shear is on those bands as it comes from the Atlantic up to the coast. Not much shear, so I do see some chances still, but you see how it's dark brown. It's not really in the white, so there is a chance with them, but it's not showing a strong chance for a tornado with these cells. I do see that through South Carolina, there is a couple cells that does have a chance They have a little bit more shear than the other cells are showing, like this one right here around 10 p.m. tonight. That's right around Columbia, but it's not looking super strong. This one looks a little stronger right there. It's getting a little pocket of shear around 11 p.m. tonight, but that's about it. Now, when you look at your cape with your lift, which you also need to give these tornadoes a chance, you can see there is a lot of lift that's going right along the edge of Georgia, South Carolina, especially in the Atlantic. And that's where a lot of these spin-ups, I believe, will be. But still, the coast of South Carolina does need to watch out. And then as you go in for Friday, you see how the lift goes right into North Carolina as well. So there is a good chance for some spin-ups. I will update you first thing in the morning so we can get some new information from high resolution rapid refresh. But all the way till 3 p.m., North Carolina, Virginia, you do have a lot of lift in that area. Only problem I have with that is when you look at what's coming through, there is some cells that is flying through while you're getting that lift. But once again, when you look at the wind shear to see what is getting a possible spin up on it, you can see you're not really getting much shear on those cells neither. I think it's going to be some nasty storms. You can see with the Euro, there is going to be a lot of lightning strikes. I don't see a tornado outbreak. 
But another thing that we go by is your helicity track. So when you have a tornado, you have wind direction change with height. And that's what this represents. It shows you which ones has a wind direction change with height. And you can see as you go through everything, you're not seeing any strong cells all the way till Friday at 8 p.m. Now there's a couple of cells in Northern Florida. I showed you that a little while ago where we do have a tornado threat for that right now. And there is one spot right here in Georgia. And it's not a strong signal. But if you look at the rest of them, nothing else is screaming on land. And you can see how it's all in the Atlantic. And this is all the way for 38 hours with HRRR. And here's the difference. You just look at the NAM for the 18 hours, it pushes it all on shore. So if you think the NAM is a better, more accurate model than high resolution rapid refresh, Take that with a little bit of, of caution because the NAM always overdoes it a little bit. Matter of fact, you've seen what was shown that a major hurricane coming towards Florida with the NAM, which you should never use, it didn't happen. You can see where it brings it a little closer on land with the NAM as it goes up to the coast, not showing anything up there neither. But it is showing this one little region. And we did see possible cells with some shear on it for South Carolina and portions of Georgia. I would take that into aspect. The rest of it, I wouldn't. That's all I can see. And this is using a model that overdoes it a little bit. And that's all it sees all the way for today and tomorrow is this right here. That's it. But just like I showed you with the wind gusts, HRRR, you can see how you're going to get the 40s and the 50s for the Panhandle of Florida, also for Georgia. Then as it goes for tomorrow afternoon, then it's going to raise back up to 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts coming with Nicole as it goes up towards the Northeast. And National Weather Service has your next 12 hours is your rainfall amount. And as we check for the rest of the evening into tomorrow, you can see it is bringing rain still towards Ohio Valley, Tennessee, Kentucky Valley, Mid-Atlantic, and the Northeast. A lot of places is going to get one to two inches of rainfall. A lot of y'all say y'all need it, so that's a good thing. Just be aware, there's still a lot of rain coming with this system. I just give you a little words of encouragement so you can take away any anxiety, any fear anybody may have out of there. there there's no call for that. Let's just get rid of that immediately. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs> Amen. Have a great day, everybody. God bless you and your families. I hope everybody is still safe throughout the whole deal. I appreciate your time. All glory does go to Yahweh, our Father in heaven. And may he keep all of you safe through the rest of this. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a great day, everybody.